Mr. Herman Fistero. Okay, good morning. Let me greet you uh, to this nice day. Uh, this is my 20th year here at the airport. Uh, I'm an exhibitor member, uh, also a sponsor for this affair. Uh, this is my hobby. But uh, I'm here to tell you a little story. Now, uh, tell you a little story about Germany, Hitler use. But before I do that, you say, what's the matter with this guy? He has a military uniform, U.S. Army uniform, and he wants to tell you something about the Hitler use. So to do that, I'm going to take the uniform off because I don't think it's appropriate to take, tell you something about Hitler and, and uh, the Hitler use with a U.S. Army uniform. The U.S. Army uniform came later in my life when I came to this uh, country. Okay. Like the announcer said, I was born 1934 in Essen, Germany. Essen, Germany is the cradle of the armament uh, of Germany. That's where Krupp had all the factories. Where all the big guns, tanks, everything that had to do with the, with the army, heavy industry was made. Uh, this is part of my hometown. This is the Krupp factories after bombing runs uh, many times. People attacked 222 times during the Second World War. Uh, my father's business. There's a church over here, and my father's business was where the church property ended, my father's business started. I lived, I lived about three blocks away in, in this general area. Our house was destroyed once by a direct hit, and then later on it was burned down the second time. Uh, in, uh, when I was in second grade, 1942, something like that, we had a recess, and uh, 10 minutes later, after we were back in school, one of the wings of a B-24 ended up in the schoolyard. If that B-24 wing would have come down 10 minutes later, half of the kids probably would have died. Uh, the next day, there was no more school because the parents got upset and said, uh, no more school, uh, that's uh, irresponsible to send the kids to school. And, and uh, have them die on, 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 on the school grounds. In, uh, when I was nine and a half years old, a friend of my father came and says, why don't you volunteer your kid for uh, the Hitler use? Because uh, you can get a whole uniform and leather shoes. As I was the only child, uh, so my parents didn't have anything to hand down. And lo and behold, my, my mother marched me to the Hitler Youth Office at nine and a half years old. And uh, I got a ration book, and it had a whole uniform and it slipped for shoes. So, uh, on the mo and this was on a Saturday. And on Monday morning, uh, my mother walked me to this office uh, where you could pick up the uniform, and I got leather shoes. And obviously, as a little kid, nine and a half years old, I was very happy to receive a whole Hitler used uniform and leather shoes because at that time all the leather stuff went to the, to the, to the German army. There was nothing that you could buy that had any kind of leather in it or on it. Uh, and uh, so with nine and a half years old, I became a Hitler used guy. Now what a lot of people don't know is there were two groups in the Hitler use. The first group was 9 to 14, and the second group was 14 to 18. The uh, 9 to uh, the 10, was 9 or 10, 10 to 14, was this group over here. Okay? When you look in a book, anybody that has a book, and there is a picture of me in a uniform. That's the same uniform that you see on this kids over here. I, for a very short time, I played a short drum. This is a long drum. Uh, I played a drum that was about half the size. Now, the, the distinction between the small boys and the big boys was that we were the only 
uniform blue in the whole hierarchy of, of, uh, of Germany that didn't use an armband. Every organization in Germany, if it was the post office, if it was uh, anybody that wore a uniform had, a, uh, had an armband. Now the big group that was 14 to 18 is, is the group that you see down there. You see on his left arm, arm he has an armband and that has the swastika on it. This group that I belong to, none of them wears an armband. Our insignia on the left side was this insignia. That's half of what the SS used. The SS used two of these ruins. We used one wound on the left side. That was the only distinction between the two groups. The uniform was the same. The insignias were the same. The medals were the same. Uh, they had uh, this fellow over there, he uses a winter uniform. It was dark blue, and we called it the ski uniform for the winter time. Uh, this guy happens to be uh, a helper because on his, on his right pocket he wears an uh, eagle from the German Luftwaffe, from the Air Force. He was a flak helper. And uh, when you were 17, 16, 17, you could help uh, anti-aircraft guns and searchlights during the Second World War. At 17, you could join the German army. And later on, uh, they had a youth division called the Hitler Division, Hitler Youth Division. They actually fought in, uh, in Russia. But most of these guys were too young, they didn't have the training, and most of them got killed. And then as some of you that probably know the history of Germany, they fought in Berlin, and uh, some of these guys, they gave him a bazooka. In Germany, it's a Panzerfaust. And uh, to shoot that thing, you had to be completely standing free of any, dis uh, any stuff in the back of you, because it has a back uh, lash. Uh, uh, and, and most of these guys got knocked off by Russian snipers and only a few guys survived. But anyways, so at nine and a half years old, I'm a Hitler youth guy with a uniform like that. And I was very proud of it, because the same thing my, my kids, when they became a, a, a Boy Scouts, and the first time they wore a uniform, they were very proud too. I mean, some of you probably that, that were Boy Scouts the first time you wore a uniform, you were, you were probably very proud too. You, you belonged to something. And the same thing is with, with most of us in Germany. We belong to something. Now, they say, many people ask me, well, what did you do and what you indoctrinated? Uh, did you have to, you know, listen to Hitler's speeches and stuff like that? Well, I didn't have to. Uh, at least the unit that I was in. Of course, they, they taught us to, uh, to shoot uh, uh, a tent. I learned how to shoot an air rifle at 25 yards. We learned how to march. We, uh, uh, we, we, we sang some songs in the office. Of course, there was a picture of Hitler, but nobody came and tried to induct the Navy. And of course, we learned how to salute the Hitler salute. We, we, uh, we had uh, in, in the morning, and mostly it was on a Saturday. At 8 o'clock in the morning, I had to be there. A couple of times uh, I got sick. I, I suffered from migraine headaches and I couldn't go. And if I didn't show up, that, uh, two officers from the Hitler Youth came to my house and they wanted to know why, uh, why I didn't show up. And my mother said, Well, my son has migraine headaches. And, uh, he can't come. And they physically wanted to see that I actually was in bed with a migraine headache. Once you belonged, you had to show up. There was no way that, that you could uh, fake it or, or say, oh, you know, I, I had to go play soccer or some other sport. That, that once you belonged, you had to go. Now, in the big cities, you, uh, you more or less, the boy, they got you and you had to belong. In the small towns, uh, it wasn't that critical. Matter of fact, at, at the uh, the last year and a half, I, I was in, in southern Germany. Uh, in that little town, I was the only one that had a full uniform and a couple of officials. Uh, the farmers in the little towns, they weren't that 
uh, taken in by the, uh, the Hitler movement. Uh, now, uh, on Saturdays when we got together, uh, like I said, first in the morning we, we marched, had to learn how to march, then we, we shot the rifles. For most of the time, what we did, we, we dug ditches along the highways. And the ditches were mostly for the army, and they were moving in trucks along the highway. And uh, when the uh, army trucks got attacked by fighter planes, so that the drivers and any military personnel that was on the trucks, that they had to go, uh, that they had a place to jump in in foxholes. Because near the end of the, of the war, especially the last year, uh, there was no more German fighter corps. And most of the army moved at night uh, because during the day there was very little army movement because most of the time uh, there were two or three uh, uh, English or American fighter planes uh, uh, flying in certain sectors of Germany and, and all military movements during the day stopped. So it was very difficult for the army to move during the daytime. Germans, I had an uncle in the, uh, in the uh, German Air Force, he told me they had airplanes because they were making airplanes to the end of the, of the war, but they didn't have any pilots. The problem with Hitler was uh, that the pilots had to fly till they physically got shot down or, or uh, till they had another problem. Uh, Hitler never believed in, in taking the good pilots off the line and, and teaching new pilots. And that, and that was a problem. So they had a, they had pilots that the first time they got up, they got shut down because they really didn't know what to do. Of course, there was always some good guys, the same like, like we have in this country. Uh, but in general, they had airplanes, and on, on top of it, uh, they, they lacked a lot of, uh, they had no gasoline. Germany was very inventive. At the end, they had the ersatz gasoline. They made the gasoline out of coal and, and some other stuff. Because Germany themselves had no gasoline. So, uh, anyway, in the... Uh, in the... Uh, and when, uh, later on, when I came to this country, uh, I got drafted uh, in uh, the U.S. Army, and I entered the Army in Puerto Rico, but I wasn't a citizen. So uh, I coined the uh, phrase German Rico. I was the only guy in the, in the U.S. Army that that uh, that, that uh, was that that was that wasn't a citizen, but also came from Puerto Rico, and that's where the word came from, German Rico. Now I had a lot of I had a lot of fun in the army. Because I always said, how could you win the war? <laughs> because when I uh, took basic training in Fort Dix, there's about 25 Puerto Ricans. I mean, these guys couldn't watch, march straight, they couldn't shoot straight. And uh, since I had all that training as a little kid, I stuck out like a sore thumb. And as you saw in my uniform, I made expert and, and uh, I could have been a sniper. I, I didn't want to do that, and, and, uh, and, uh, and the army sent me right back to Germany. Uh, I, I was in an office, I was an interpreter, and there's another story. Uh, since I wasn't a citizen, I couldn't get any uh, clearance, but I typed top secret reports and not being a citizen, I and mean, that's very hard to do. Uh, but the army believed in me and said, hey, we tried to kill you the first time, <laughs> World War II, and he couldn't do that, so you must be pretty good. So we take you in and, 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 uh, and teach you certain things. But uh, there was another story when it came to this top secret course. Uh, when there was an inspection, uh, I couldn't be uh, interviewed by the CIA because if they would have known that I top secret reports, everybody would have been in trouble. So off my office where I was working, there was an old uh, uh, toilet from left over from the German army, and, and the window was about this, this high off the ground, 
So when the inspectors came from the CIA, uh, I had a, they had a special uh, a system for me to know when they came, and I had to jump out that window head first because there was no way that these guys could interview me <laughs> because I was an authorized to type this stuff secret reports because for me, after I typed them, the, the uh, lieutenant who was a West Point graduate, he signed off and then it went to, uh, to uh, the 7th Army headquarters in, uh, yeah, in at Brussels at the time. Uh, so there were some nice stories that, that I experienced in the Army. And, and, uh, so, but anyway, uh, back to the Hitler use. After the war, I got arrested by the French. And I was 11 years old, and I had a little red thing on the side over here. And I had no clue why I got arrested. And, and, uh, and they wouldn't talk to me about it. First of all, I couldn't speak German anyway. And I couldn't speak uh, French until later on. Uh, so uh, they got an interpreter. It took about six hours. And, and in the meantime, my mother got a little bit of it that, that I got arrested by the French. And she came and, and uh, they interviewed her and then they interviewed me and then they wanted to know why I had this little red pen. And I said, my mother was a master seamstress and we had a lot of these red pins. And, uh, and I didn't find out till later that in the area where I was born, uh, there was a Hitler Youth group. Uh, that got together after the war, like a couple of months after the war, and they were blowing up French and, and U.S. vehicles at night. Now, uh, the good part was they never asked me if I belonged to the Hitler groups. And I just told them that, uh, like they said, if my mother had this letter, they were the seamstress. So they checked this out, they went to the school and, uh, and asked the teacher, what they knew about me, they asked some of the kids. And they said the good part was they never asked me if I was in the head of If they should have known that I was in the head of I probably still would be locked up. And, and uh, so uh, after 12 hours of interrogation, I had French uh, speaking in German. Uh, let me know. Uh, but that was an experience to get. arrested by the French military because I had a little bit of a thing. Okay, Another incident happened. Years old. Whenever I traveled in Germany, uh, it was a bomb. I lived in a couple of places. We had to move here. We had to move here. I spent a year and a half in a coal mine bunker. The bunker was a an abandoned coal mine. I said they had come out of coal and or I had seen in two years the government made a new bomb shelter over a hundred feet into the bomb. Every time there was a bomb in the middle, my mother and I would be going to this bomb. And all the schools were burned, were destroyed, so the bomb would be the two and basically, I didn't go to school. And I always say, I always have my mind. But after the, after, and that was a lot of kids, a lot of kids didn't receive a lot of uh, instructions in the schooling. But after the war, we all had to make up for it. And I went to so many schools after the war that when I came to this country, I told everybody that I had schooling up to here. I went to Four different schools, and many times I went to the school with the whole of the such and with the whole of the chaos because I got so many stuff with uh, paperwork and books and stuff like that. that uh, I said that for five years I didn't want to see a book because I went to all these different schools to make up that way. And I had my generation, I had the least amount of instructions put Germany back on the map because as you know that Germany was destroyed and became one of the best countries after the war to live in and reconstructed the country. Uh, and today even to 
today, it's one of the best countries in Europe, and everybody wants to go to Germany of all the countries uh, that are uh, surround Germany. But anyway, in, in, uh, uh, when people are traveling, I always travel in the food. You know, so why? I don't know. Maybe I was proud of it. But it had had some benefits. People that look after you and help you. And in, in one of the instances, uh, uh, we were traveling, you know, my mother and I were traveling on a train. Of course, all the trains were extremely uh, full because not many trains were running anymore. I got on the train, the train took off, and my mother still was standing on the platform. And I'm still screaming, and my mother was screaming. And of course, I didn't know what happened to my mother because I was inside the train. My mother related to me later. The good part was that they only had steam trains, you know, and, and, and when they take off, they, they take off very, very slowly. As, as, as you know, some of your older guys that had rain on the steam. Before they got shoot, 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 shoot. And then until they get up to speed, you know, it takes a couple of months. The day with electric trains, the guy he pushes the bottom and that train goes a mile a minute and is in seconds. So uh, my, 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 my mother told me that she was standing on a platform and screaming, and, and I, remember, I remember hearing that. Uh, was, uh, and she said that a couple of guys just grabbed her between the legs and, and, and picked her up and the only window that, that, that was open was the toilet for the train. So that we pushed her head first into the toilet and that was the only way that we got together because if that train would have left with me on the train I probably never would have seen my mother again. And there were other instances that, that happened uh, the same way. Uh, in 43, uh, Hitler decided to save the news of Germany. So all the kids, uh, boys and girls, were taken away from the children, from the mothers and the parents. They were, they were sent to, uh, to, the, to the farm in southern Germany. So for half a year, uh, I was sent to, uh, to a farm in a little town called Denkingen in Bavaria. And uh, since uh, I only was like eight years old, I figured uh, uh, when I got off the train, I looked backwards and there was only one, one track in the field of work. And I wouldn't go home, I just follow that track and I find, find my home. Uh, now with eight years, you don't have a lot of plans. <laughs> but, that, but, but that's what uh, my... Uh, I figured I would do I didn't like the people that they sent me to. But then my mother, after six months, came and, and she was afraid that she would die under all this bomb in, in my hometown. She said if she had to die, she would, then we might as well have to die together. And that's when I went back to this town and, and then for a year and a half, no school. And, and uh, we played in this, in this burnt out buildings. Uh, if I sit back, sometimes I say, hey, that was a good time. You didn't have to go to school. And, uh, and at that time, I started collecting military stuff. And, uh, and that was also the time I, I, my father uh, took me to, uh, to the Hitler use. Uh, and so since seven and a half years, I collect military stuff. And, and that's my hobby today. I mean, in the, I have a table in there uh, with military stuff. If uh, anybody wants to talk to me on the side or take a picture of the stuff, you're welcome to it. Uh, I enjoy this country. I think this is the best country in, in, that you can live in anyway. And there's things sometimes wrong in this country, but compared to other countries, uh, there's no better one than this one. Uh, and I served with Anna in the military, and, and I would do it again here. So, I'm not that fast on my feet anymore. Uh, today I'm 82 years old. I can run and climb like, like we did in the army before. But I still can shoot straight, I guarantee you that. <laughs> so so uh, thanks for listening, thanks for coming. Uh, if anybody wants to talk to me, like I said, on the side, uh, I'm willing to do that. 
because Nelson is free, it's a free country. Uh, uh, I enjoy that here. My kids are right here. Uh, thanks for coming to this year. I, uh, I don't tell my kids too much. But uh, uh, I, I did talks at high schools and uh, at VFWs and stuff like that. I don't hold that stuff in, and I have other stories to tell. I see more instructions that last me two lifetimes. I lived under this stuff, and, and uh, I see desert instructions. Uh, but that's for another time to, to say. Uh, okay, thanks a lot.